Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. This is the third video in a tutorial series where we deploy a Django application on Microsoft Azure. In the first video we already changed our Django code so it's ready for deployment. In our previous video we pushed our code to GitHub with Git so that we now have the code in an online location. And in this video we will create Microsoft Azure resources so everything is ready for deployment. We will then use the video after this to actually deploy our Django code to Azure and check whether everything works the way that we expect. In this video, we are going to focus on four main tasks. We're going to start by creating a resource group on Azure, which will serve as kind of a container for the services that we need. Next, we're going to use Azure App Services, which will help us creating a database, but also a server. So we have everything we need to run our code on. Then I will explain our resources and what you can find where. And lastly, we will be adding environment variables uh, to both our code, but also to the Azure portal. So you can also see how that works. So one of the prerequisites for this video is that you actually have um, access to the Azure portal. I will include a link in the description below where you can set up your own Microsoft Azure account uh, so you can follow along with this tutorial. And setting up your Azure account is completely free. And also when you do so, you get uh, quite some credit uh, available to you. So you can actually follow along with this tutorial and, and try some different things without having to pay for it. So that's quite a nice way to getting introduced to the Azure products. So when you log into Azure, which is located on portal.azure.com, this is the homepage where you will land. Uh, this is kind of a dashboard where you can deploy new services, but also view your most recent or your favorite resources you've created so far. So the first thing we need to do on the Azure portal is create a resource group. And a resource group represents a container for all of your services. So it's kind of uh, yeah, the way to divide your services across projects as also enables them to communicate with each other. So I'm going to click on resource groups and you will see that I don't have any yet. And I'm going to now select create. And this will open up a menu where I first need to select my subscription. Uh, well, I only have one, so I'm going to go for Azure subscription one. And then I can give my resource group a name. And I'm going to name my resource group Azure Django Deploy. And let's see what it passes validation. It does. Uh, it also asks you to specify a region and for all Azure resources goes that you want to select a region closest to you because then you your resources get stored on the closest data center and it literally means the less distance the faster it will work. So I select Western Europe for me and now I'm going to go to review plus create. So it has done some validations, it had passed that and I can now click on create. So it will take some time and now you can see that our resource group has been created. And now when we are going to create other services, we can put them inside of this container. So all of our resources are categorized in the containers that we would like. The next step we're going to take is create an Azure App Service. And Azure App Services helps us with deploying web applications on the Microsoft Azure portal. So on the top bar, I'm going to look for app services and you can already see it popping up right here. And as you can see, I don't have any so far, so I'm going to click on create. And then I have a few options. In this case, I can pick whether I want to create a web app, a static web app or a web app plus a database. Well, I will need a web app plus a database. So I'm going to select this option right here. And this is quite convenient because it will uh, create both the server on which my code will uh, actually work, but it will also create the database and it will also already set some connections and variables that you need to set for the services to communicate with each other. So it's very convenient to pick that option. So again, it's going to ask me for my subscription and that is going to be the, the only one that I have available. Uh, resource group, I'm going to select the resource group that I've just created because I want those services to land inside of this container. And in the region, I'm again going to select the region closest to me, and that is going to be Western Europe. Then it's going to ask me for web app details. Now, the name is going to be uh, actually the URL where we can find our app. So I'm going to try some things because, of course, it needs to be unique. So let's say that I want to do Azure Django tutorial. 
is still available. So I'm going to pick this one for my web application. And it's also going to request me the runtime stack. And I am going to select Python. But I will also need to pick the version. And you want ideally to pick the version that you're also using on your local computer. So uh, I'm just going to go back to my code for a second. And I'm going to type in the command in my terminal python dash dash version. And you can see that I'm using version 3.8.10. So in here, I'm also going to pick Python 3.8. Now we're going to move on to the database. And you already see the message here that database access will be locked down and it's not exposed. So Azure already takes in some requirements for compliance and security. So that's really nice. Uh, so you don't have to take care of that yourself. Um, you can immediately see that you can use a number of backends for your applications, but since that we've picked Python, it automatically goes to uh, PostgreSQL as the best option. And that is also the option that we've specified in our settings file. So yeah, all around this is the best option for when you deploy a Django application. So I'm just going to select the flexible server, and it's automatically going to generate a server name and a database name. I would not change that. It really doesn't have that much, uh, yeah, that much <laughs> purpose. Uh, it's going to ask you if you want to have Azure, Azure Cache for Redis. I'm just going to leave that on no. And for the hosting plan, I'm going to do basic because right now it's just a hobby or a research purpose. It's it's not really a production app. Stand is also going to be quite a little bit more expensive than this basic version. All right. So this seems to be all good. So we are gonna to go to review and create. And in this step, uh, yeah, Azure is gonna do some, some validations. It's going to check all the things that I've filled in uh, and hopefully it will give us the okay. So we are back and the validation has successfully passed. Uh, if we scroll down, you can already see some of the details. So for example, the, the engine, the regions, the usernames of our database, the passwords of our database, and just some technical details. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on create and now it is going to deploy all of the different services that we will need for this to work. Uh, it is not only going to deploy an app service and a database, it is also going to create something called a virtual network, which uh, basically provides uh, yeah, networking capabilities and also make sure that our services can communicate with each other and that others cannot. Now the deployment of these services can take quite some time, uh, typically yeah, between three and 10 minutes somewhere, depending on how fast it's gonna go. Uh, so I will be back with you once my deployment is complete. So it has taken a few minutes, but now our deployment is complete. And if you now go to your homepage and then go to our resource group, we will see that there are a number of uh, services put inside of this container. So on the top here, you see an app service plan. And this is basically just a container for our app service. App Service is uh, quite an important resource. This is where we will deploy the code of our website. So this is quite uh, important and this is one to remember. Then next up, we've got our Azure database for PostgreSQL Flexible Server. Now, this service here, this is a database. So the database is going to communicate with our App Service to store um, all of our records from our app into the database. Next, you can see that we have virtual networks and private DNS zones. So the virtual network is kind of, a, yes, takes care of the networking uh, and the private DNS zones. Make sure that those networking options happen in a good and secure way. Those free services basically facilitate the communication between our app service and our Azure database for PostgreSQL. So the main things to uh, take away from here is your app service will be important for uh, for deploying your code. This is where you do all that stuff. You have the database here. You don't really need to do anything with that in particular. Uh, and the other services around are just containers or facilitators for those services. So if we go into our app service, you will notice on the overview page that we see a few details here. So you can see all different kinds of resource groups, statuses, locations, uh, but also the domain, for example. Um, so if we go here, we click on the link, which is now our domain name, and it's going to take some time to load. All right, so our URL has now loaded, and you can see that we have a web app uh, that is waiting uh, for our content right now. Uh, so that's something we'll do in the next video. 
So over here on the left, you've got this menu. Overview just provides you with the details. And the most important parts are going to be configuration and the deployment center. Now, inside of your deployment center, and we will utilize this in our next video, this is where we connect our code to, um, to our app. So the deployment center is where we connect our code to the actual app. So here we can state what the sources of our code. So this is the way that we connect things. And if we go to configuration, you can see that this is where our application settings live. So one of the few things you will immediately see is that you see the Azure PostgreSQL connection string. And this is also something that we've put inside of our settings.py file. So this is one you might recognize from a few videos ago. So for now, we're going to add one additional setting to our application. And that setting is going to be our secret key, just to show you how it works. And also because this is quite important to have inside of our app. So what we can do, uh, first of all, let's go to a secret generator. Uh, because we just want to have a random key as a value which can serve as our secret key so i'm going to click on new application setting and we're going to call that secret and then we can pass a value to that but i'm just going to select one of my uh, keys that have been generated here just paste it in here and i'm going to say okay so now this setting has been added and I need to click on top to save. So it actually stores that correctly and you can see it's immediately updating the web app settings. And now we also need to go to our code and connect the secret to our code for when we deploy, it's gonna look at this secret variable and use that as a secret key instead of the hard-coded one that we have right now inside of our code. So you can see that in our settings.py file, we have a secret key, which is a hard-coded value. It actually specifies it here as top as well. Keep the secret key used in production secret. And that's exactly what we will do. So I'm going to copy this value and bring it over to deployment. And here, just above the allowed host on top of my code, I'm going to paste it. But we're going to set the value to something else. We're going to set it to the environment variable we've set in the Azure portal. And we can find it by saying os.environ. And we're going to open these brackets and we're going to state the name of the variable we've just created. And the name of that variable is secret. And um, now when our code is being deployed, it will take the value from secret, which has been set in the Azure portal. And that way, even when people take a look at our code, they will never be able to figure out what our credentials are, similar to what we've done in our passwords. Now, of course, this is means that our code is modified, so we need to push this to our GitHub repository again. Um, and we can do that quite simply by adding git add. Next, we can state git commit dash am, and we can say that this is adding secret key. So it says, okay, one file changed, one insertion, and then we do git push with them brings it to our GitHub repository. And now the change in our code has been made and this is ready for deployment. And I have navigated to my uh, repository on GitHub and you can see the change already here. So it states the message that we've given it, adding secret key. And if we go even deeper to our Azure project and then to our production dot or deployment.py files, it also stays that matches. You can see that we now refer to our secret instead of the hard-coded secret, which will keep our app safe. And that was all that we needed to do for this video. We have created a resource group on Azure, uh, which serves as a container for our services. We also used Azure App Services to create a database and a server. And I briefly explained to you what each of these resources means and what it does. And we also added an environment variable inside of our Azure portal so that we now know that our secret key is going to be protected from there. This means that we have now completed the third video of our tutorial series, and that means that there's only one left. And in this next video, we're gonna deploy our Django code to Microsoft Azure and test whether everything works the way that we expect. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.